I think Australia has a terrific record for being inventive. There's clearly a brilliant innovative streak in, uh, in Australians. We've had an honourable role to play. It may be due to the circumstances, their isolation, uh, the need to be creative. We had some early innovations. In 1854 we had our first telegraph line between Melbourne and Williamstown, the port. A lot of the, the first forays into electronics in Australia were about telecommunication. Outside of America and England it was the first country in the world to use Morse code. Morse code revolutionised communication and it wasn't long before those telegraph lines spread like spiders webs all around Australia. That was the Victorian internet. The Darwin to Java undersea cable was put in place in 1871 and it was to connect to the overland telegraph line. We then had cable contact back to Europe. The businesses that used the Morse code the most was in fact the wool industry. And we had an extraordinary inventor called Henry Sutton. Henry Sutton had designed the first of the rechargeable batteries. He was very much a self-taught genius of his age. The compound telephone which we know today which has one piece came as a result of earpiece at one end, microphone at the other, all off the same magnet. That was a brilliant invention. Alexander Cram Bell comes to visit him in Ballarat. Bell had that telephone in two pieces and Henry Sutton made it in one. And you've got companies doing high-tech things. Radio was explosive in its growth through the 20s. It was vital that Australia have communications, particularly communications with the ships at sea. The whole electronics industry in that period, from 1920s onwards, was dominated by the firm AWA and by its chief scientist, Sir Ernest Fisk. So he thought he could communicate with the afterlife, with the dead, with radio. They're starting production of vacuum tubes. They're realising radio is huge. This is called a Traeger pedal. It became familiar to people on stations to use the pedal radio to communicate with the doctor, to communicate with each other. Radio in Australia is probably seen as a little bit more vital because we're it's a big continent. In Australia, during that wartime period, one of the most important developments that took place was at CSIR Radio Physics, where they developed the distance measuring equipment. In World War II, Australia had developed portable radar systems for our soldiers to take into the field in jungle warfare, and that was fairly extraordinary in its day. Uh, during 1946, I began to develop uh, ideas for an electronic system for computation. Towards the end of 1947, I had more or less completed a theoretical, logical design for what was to become CIRAC. CIRAC came about because it was part of the general development across the world because there was a need for high-speed computation. CIRAC was the brainchild of Trevor Pearcy and Maston Beard. The machine was well-conceived and well-engineered by the team at Radio Physics. CIRAC has the greatest Australian content of any computer ever made. There were only three other computers in the world. It was a huge advance over the calculating machines, which was all they had. CIRAC was the first computer to generate music. Colonel Bergie's March was the first thing, which was a very popular tune of its day. You know, da, 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 da. And that was the first use of a computer to generate music in the world. CIRAC, in later years, when it was in Melbourne, was the first computer to generate a 24-hour weather forecast. It was an extraordinary machine. It did extraordinary work. It found the centre of our galaxy. They developed games that people could play using the cathode ray screens and the flashing lights. It was a remarkable machine created and maintained by remarkable people. One of the more significant Australian inventions in electronics was the black box flight recorder. And, of course, the... Uh atomic absorption spectrometer, which uh, was a CSIRO development. Australia's always been in the forefront of television research. Australia kept pace. Australia kept pace with the rest of the world in this technology. The reason why biomedical is because you've got this huge centre of biomedical research here, which needs hardware and, and needs instruments and things like that. They were experimenting. There, there was the bionic ear. I have spent the greater part of my working life focused on developing what turned out to be a bionic ear or a cochlear implant for profoundly deaf people. And the pacemaker? In fact, in 1971, Teletronics was the first company in the world to put a hermetically sealed pacemaker on the market. So there's certainly people doing some very clever stuff in that area. In the very late 60s, early 70s, Dick Smith came along and started up Dick Smith Electronics. I'm going to sell electronics and I'm going to do it in a revolutionary way. And then straight after that, we got the, the very first digital chips, the CD4011, 4001, and this was the beginning of the digital digital era. Late 70s, mid 80s was sort of like the golden age of hobby electronics, I think. It was magazines, it was buying kits, there was a computer club. The first project that I built myself with some friends was the National Semiconductor.
about a kid called the scab. These were times when it was really quite a Mensa test to get the smallest computer to do the smallest thing. There was a, an enthusiasm, almost a religious zealot of interest in these parts. I think it was. I think that it was very exciting for people to, to be able to, to build something which used a chip. It was, it was a concept which was new. The first commercial computers were starting to come in. The Dick Smith Sorcerer, for example. Then the Australian Micro B. Unix became the thing. Australia also built the Fairlight, which is the world's first digital sampler. And Fairlight expanded. It became a, a very innovative audio editing tool for post-production. Post-production being the synchronisation of sound to image. Basically the Fairlight system is still incorporated inside the Blackmagic system these days. And Rode Microphones now, one of the world's most successful microphone manufacturers, is in Sydney. I'm particularly proud of what I did there. The NT3, which is a little pencil microphone. The CSRO is government controlled and they've had some big intellectual property wins recently with the Wi-Fi patent which they won, which is absolutely incredible. There's been a long process of innovation and discovery.